Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I hope you are already aware about it that CSIR has announced their notification for CSIR June 2024 exam. The exam dates are scheduled to be 25, 26 and 27th of June. Application forms are open till 21st of May. So if you are interested and if you are like preparing for this exam, please fill the form. I am here to talk about major changes. There are three major changes which happened, uh, which are introduced for the first time for this CSI June 2024 exam. And there is one more change, which is a major change, you can say, but it's not going to affect a lot of students. But there are three major changes which are going to affect every one of you who is preparing for this. So let's start with it. Okay. And let's try to look upon it. So in this video, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll try to keep it short and crisp. So I won't be discussing those things which are general, which you all know about. So for that, I will suggest you to read uh, the information bulletin and uh, or if you want, I can make a detailed video upon all the other necessary things. But I will be just focusing upon the major changes which has happened this year. OK, so let's look upon it. So this is CSIR official uh, uh, like uh, brochure, you can say or information bulletin. You can get it from the official website. And as you can see, this is for June 2024 exam. So I will just scroll down a little bit. So I have highlighted actually important things. So you will get all the things over here. Okay, all the information regarding uh, eligibility criteria, date of exam, uh, like uh, registration application, everything is given in detail. So if you have time, you can read about them. Okay, and I will highly recommend you to do that. So let's come a little bit down. So the first change, the first thing which has been changed is uh, the application fees okay so this year the application fees is increased further if you remember the last exam csir june 2023 and csir december 2023 the application fees was increased from the previous one so earlier it used to be 1000 rupees for general category it was increased to 1100 for june 2023 and december 2023 but now 50 rupees extra has been in increased and now the fees for general category is 1150 rupees application fees okay so this much you have to pay if you belong to general category if you belong to ews category or obc in that case you have to pay 600 earlier it was 550 so again 50 rupees increase over here and for scst category it was 275 so again 50 rupees over there so in all the three categories 50 rupee increase in the application fees has been done okay so these are the updated amount or updated fees which you have to pay while filling the form so this is the first major change which has happened you can say the first change is increase or hike in fees and uh, the irony is that csir is like you can say that it has it is now increasing the application fees 1150 is a big amount actually for any exam i just hope and pray that the amount of facility which they provide or the management which they provide for the exam should be decent enough and should justify this fees okay so yeah that's one uh, like you can say one complaint i have from csir and uh, that's one hope i have from csir that uh, yeah they justify the application fee anyway so there are other things also you can look upon it that what are the important dates like uh, all the other things are given over here as i mentioned the exam dates are on 25th 26th and 27th of june other things are over here so I won't be going into that. I am sticking to the major changes. So let me scroll down a little bit. Yeah. What are the things you can carry? What are the things you should not carry? All the things are given about CSIR, about NTA. It is given. Next major change is basically how you are going to get the result. Okay. So it is given that now the uh, award or the, the result will be divided into three categories. Category one, category two and category three okay so these are the three categories which we have now so category number one will be the award for jrf and appointment for assistant professor so those who will fall under first category they will be like they will get jrf also like they will be called as a jrf also they will be also eligible for assistant professor ship that means in future if they want to apply for assistant professor they are eligible for that and they are also eligible to get phd admission based upon this okay in case if you are not aware about it, CSIR has made or UGC had, has made this major change that if now you want to do PhD from any university in India, you should have a net qualified. Okay. Now, or you should have uh, this exam qualified. I'll tell you how. So this is the first category. If you cut, if you pass the cutoff of first category, you will be eligible for all the three. You will be getting JRF fellowship. You will be getting assistant professorship also. Like in future, you can apply for that. 
and you also get eligible for a uh, phd admission but if you qualify under category 2 then you won't be getting any jrf fellowship that means you won't be getting any fellowship for your phd but you uh, you become eligible for assistant professorship so in future if you want to apply as assistant professor you can do that and also you become eligible to apply for phd admission so these two things you become eligible for if you qualify the third category which will like i suppose that it will have the lowest cutoff among the three in that case you will only be eligible for admission to phd that's all you will not be getting any fellowship throughout phd that means you won't be having jrf fellowship uh, you won't be having assistant like you won't be eligible for assistant professorship anytime in future but you can take admission in phd so these are the now three new categories which has been included i have made a detailed video on it i will give you that in the i button you can watch that video there are few more things written over here that JRF qualified candidates are admitted to PhD program based on interview as per the UGC regulation. So you cannot directly go and start doing your PhD. Okay, you have to go through a uh, interview even if you have a JRF. Okay, joint CSIR under category two. If you have qualified under category two or category three, they can be used as entrance test for PhD admission in place of entrance test conducted by different universities. So that means earlier central universities or different universities of india they used to conduct their individual entrance test now if you have qualified under category 2 or category 3 you don't have to go through those en entrance test and this exam itself can be considered as uh, entrance test for phd third point says that for candidates who qualified under category 2 and category 3 the marks obtained in the net will have 70 percent weightage and 30% weightage will be based upon the performance in interview or viva voce uh, conducted by the university concerned. The PhD admission will be based upon the combined merit. So it's pretty simple. Your 70% weightage of your net score, 30% weightage of your interview performance merged together will make a merit. And based upon that, you can take admission into PhD. This is for those who have qualified under category 2 and category 3. Category 1 does not have to go through this. The category one just have to give an interview and that interview will decide whether that person is going to get selected or not now the next point says that for admission to phd the marks obtained in net by the candidate in category two and category three will be valid for a period of one year so in order to take phd admission the eligibility is only for one year although the eligibility for becoming assistant professor will be lifelong so that eligibility has not changed so if you have qualified under category two your eligibility to apply as assistant professor is lifelong as it remains okay so it it does not comes with uh, any validity uh, but yeah to if you want to take phd admission and if you have qualified under category 2 or category 3 of the result in that case you have to take admission within one year of that then the result of net will be declared in percentile along with the marks obtained by the candidate to utilize the uh, utilize the marks of the admission in phd and the fourth point says that the number of candidates who will be qualified for JRF assistant professor and admission to PhD only will be decided by the result committee. So how many of them will be qualified that will be decided later. This is the second major change which has been done that means now this is entirely a new thing which we are going to experience an entirely new uh, like result panel you can say or an entirely new way of representing the result that's what we are going to expect uh, from this particular CSI net exam okay so that's the second major change the third major change you can say or this is not actually major change but yeah now uh, this change is going to affect a lot of students and uh, this is that uh, those who have the eligibility for a new kind of eligibility is included that means even those who are in the bachelor's degree program okay so candidates who have passed a four year or eight semesters bachelor's degree program they and they have if they have a minimum of 75 percent marks in aggregate in that case they can also apply for this particular exam okay so that is very important thing you know that for phd admission or to apply for jrf you should have qualified masters and then you can do phd right but now if you have this much mark 75 percent marks and if you have four years of bachelor's degree that means it is for applicable for btech students actually in that case you become eligible for uh, uh, like to apply for this exam you can apply for this now it says that the candidates qualifying the net based upon the four year undergraduate degree which i was discussing will be eligible for the award of jrf okay you will be getting an award of jrf and for the admission to phd means you can skip masters and you can directly go into phd but 
the candidates qualifying the net based on four year undergraduate program will not be eligible to be appointed as assistant professor still that is very important point which uh, csir has included that to become assistant professor you have to qualify masters you cannot just skip masters and apply for assistant professorship so it's not going to be like you do a four year bachelors and then directly do phd and then apply for assistant professor it does not work like that okay so you have to in order if you want to become assistant professor you have to go through bachelors masters then phd okay or at least bachelors masters and qualify this exam but yeah if in case you just want to do phd and you just want a fellowship in that case just with the help of your four years bachelor's degree you can directly apply uh, for uh, you can qualify this exam and you can directly join as phd student okay so this is also one of the change which has happened the last and the most important change which has been done this year is the change in upper age limit so csir earlier used to have a upper age limit of 28 years that was the upper age limit but see because in the last few years there has been a lot of things happened in csir net exam okay a lot of cycles has got disturbed many exams you know they were scheduled at a particular day or a particular time they were not conducted on time and there were many exams which were skipped and because of that there is a big number of student who missed a lot of chance uh, if let's say somebody he was in his let's say his age was 28 years and he was having let's say two chance that year but then in 2020 there was no exam so that person the next year became 29 years and now he is not eligible to apply so he didn't got that equal opportunity or he didn't got that equal number of chances to appear in the exam okay so i think to uh, balance that or something they have now increased the upper age limit one more reason why i think the age limit has been increased because a new category of result is included that means admission to phd so because that is included that's why they have increased the age limit so for jrf they have made a age limit of 30 years as the upper age limit as on the first day of the month in which the examination is concluded that means in june 2024 so your age should be 30 years or less on the first of june okay the relaxation up to five years will be provided to the candidates of obc ncl category and uh, scst or pwd categories depending upon the government uh, norms okay so these were the major changes these uh, if you will read down this whole uh, like information bulletin these are the major changes which has been brought up these are the new things which has been included and i thought of sharing with you because it's very important to know what is new this time okay and what you are going to see new this time although there are very minor changes might have been there but these are the major things which can affect your exam uh, like experience your post exam experience and how you are planning your career okay so that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching do let me know what are your thoughts about it and uh, if you find anything else which is new or which is updated do let us know in the comment section i will pin your comment down over there okay so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one till then. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.